and uh, pay no attention to that air condition you hear running there. Some of y'all's car ain't been washed in three months. That's good for it. Now, they're getting their, uh, uh, Miss uh, Caitlin, where's she at? Getting her uh, bookstore ready to crank it back up and get it open. So you'll have plenty of stuff to buy in the bookstore for the fall. King James Bibles, Bible study, stuff for gifts, CDs, good singing. And then they're going to have some Christmas cards that are all King James Scripture. Uh, you know how hard it is. Find Christmas cards that just got the King James Bible in them. I get, we get Christmas cards every year, and they'll say Merry Christmas, and they'll have half of it marked out and, because people don't want us to think that they, you know, do that. And so you don't have to do that with these Christmas cards. And they're cheap. We'll have a bunch of them, some real neat stuff here in the next few weeks. We're also going to have a shipment of bumper stickers uh, for you that let your bumper sticker die out or fall off or whatever you did in the summertime. If you'll take them things off, and wash your car and let it dry and then put it back on, it'll never cause you no trouble. A little bit of trouble witnesses to thousands of people, tens of thousands of people. Those stickers, I get it all the time. Somebody will go by and they'll go, hallelujah, blow the horn. Other people have a different reaction. But that's a, that's a reaction, amen? So uh, get you a bumper sticker, put them on your car. Some of y'all did real good there for about two months after the youth rally. Now you've done, done quit it, and uh, I can't imagine that. So let's be a witness. You only got one life, be a witness. Our sign out there, we had a lot of comments on the sign. The other one just wore out completely. It's faded out. And the reason we put that, Jesus is the answer. You know why I put that on there? Because uh, the, the people from the, the company told me that there's 56,000 cars a day goes by here. That's a lot of people. And there are, good night, 10 days, that's a half a million. So in a few months, we will have witnessed to millions of people that we'll never see in this earth. On this earth, going to Raleigh, going to uh, uh, Chapel Hill, coming on business trips, We'll never see them. They'll never come to our church. But I'll tell you one thing. Somebody on drugs, somebody getting ready to commit suicide, somebody will see that sign. Jesus is the answer. And I'm praying that'll stick. They only got about three seconds there to read when they come by, maybe two and a half. So uh, I have read it in one. But uh, let's, let's uh, pray about that. Pray that God will use it. Now I'm going to talk about that a little bit tonight more. Think of Isaiah chapter 6, and uh, you ain't got nothing else to do right now, do you? I mean, it's flooding outside. It's absolutely coming a flood. That's the hardest I've heard it rain in a long time. So we ain't going nowhere. I mean, you're not going to sit out on a picnic table and eat ice cream tonight, unless you're crazy. Um, there's really something wrong with you if you do that tonight. Uh, Isaiah 6. And look at verse number um, number five. Then I see it, said I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away. Hallelujah. And thy sin purged. And I heard the voice, also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat. Make their ears heavy. Shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, lest they hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert 
and be healed. I'm going back to verse 8 tonight where the Lord said, Whom shall I send? I need some people that will go over here and tell these people. And Isaiah said, Here my Lord, send me. I want to preach on that little thought tonight. Just really short tonight, I'm going to ask you to help me. Who will go? God is looking for some people that will go. There ain't a person in here, I don't think, wouldn't love to see these altars full of sinners getting saved. I don't believe there is. I don't believe there's anybody in here. I think I know everybody in here tonight. I don't think there's a person in here tonight that wouldn't rejoice if you just saw people just flooding and bawling their eyes out, getting saved, families being put back together. I mean, wouldn't that be a blessing? Now, I'm going to tell you tonight, you ought to thank God that we have a church where that's our desire. You ought to thank God that we've got a church that the altar starts on one side of the building and goes the other side, door to door. You ought to thank God for that. I harp on the bus ministry. I preach on a lot. But I'm telling you, you ought to thank God that you go to a church that believes in the bus ministry. You'd be surprised at the preachers who downplay and have nothing to do, don't even want to have a bus ministry. I heard one well-known preacher, good man, good preacher, and he said, bless God, these people out here trying to reach these little kids, he said they got it backwards. You ought to try to reach your parents. And you know, I agree with that. I agree with that. But what about where mom and daddy's drunk and the parents won't even listen to you? You're just going to let the kids go to hell? No. You get them little boys and girls and bring them. I've got a burden. I've got a burden for kids. There's enough people in this room here tonight that could reach no telling how many people and get them in here for church. I want to ask you a question tonight. When is the last time or ever that you personally have went to witness to somebody and they got saved? You led somebody to the Lord. You say, preacher, I'll be honest with you, I've never done that. Well, it might be a good week for you to just clamp, get on this altar tonight and say, God, help me to be a soul winner. I want to be a soul winner. Lord, help me. Put somebody in my path. You say, nobody's ever in, you know what? Ain't no wonder nobody ain't in your path. God knows you're not even going to witness to them anyway. I mean, Isaiah said, here am I, send me. I'm just going to talk to you out of my heart a little bit tonight. And you know what I'd like to do? This is for your benefit, I'm telling you. You'll be blessed if you'll do this. Everybody in here tonight, get in this altar and say, here am I, Lord. You do with me whatever you want to do. God, I will do it. These young people, these teenagers, these boys, these girls, let me tell you what happened. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was out down this way, down ex off exit 111, and um, I saw somebody's with me. I, th I might have been by myself. I can't remember. And I went and knocked on a trailer of one of our bus kids' family, and nobody came. We stuck a little flyer in the, do in the, in the, the door, and there was, looked like some other people had moved down in the trailer down the hill here. And I went down there, and I thought, well, just, 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 you know, I just felt like I should, and I just knocked on the door. Boom, boom, boom. Lady came to the door. I said, hey, hey ma'am, I'm, I'm Danny Castle. We're, I'm from Shining Light Baptist Church up here at exit 107. She said, oh, yeah, I've seen that church. She said, I work up there at Sutton and Sutton. And I go by there every day. I said, we'd like to invite you to come. And she said, you know, I might just do that. And you know how people say that all the time. And uh, the day we, we was working on the church, it was I was busy. Lord in mercy. We was in here working and sweating. And we didn't turn the air conditioner on. I mean, you ought to sweat when you work. And, uh, and we, we got in there and we was dragging out carpet and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, a lady walked in here and said, hey, and I thought she looked familiar. She said, you remember me? And I said, uh, I don't know. She said, you came and knocked on my door the other day. And I said, oh, down here. And she said, yeah, that lady came up here and looked me up. She said, can I talk to you? And I said, yes, ma'am. Men was in there working on it. I said, come over here. We went over and sat down in my office for a minute. And I sat down. She told me her name. She told me she had moved here from California. And she said, I used to serve God. And I got here. Sort of weird hearing somebody got saved in California and come to North Carolina and backslid. 
<laughs> Usually the other way around. Uh, but anyway, we sat in there and talked, and, and I prayed with her and witnessed to her, and, and she said, when you came by my house that day, she said, it may, I know I need to make a change. I know. And then so I went back yesterday. I was by myself again yesterday, and uh, I, I knocked on her door, and she came to the door, and another lady came to the door, and she said, I've been going to church. I want you to know I've been going to church. I said, well, praise God. Hallelujah. And you know what, people? There are people everywhere. Uh, Kelly, I guess it was y'all, you and, uh, and Blanca. Where you at, Blanca? You back there? Her, Kelly, didn't y'all go somewhere this late yesterday? And a man and three teenagers were here this morning that had never been here before. All they did is just <laughs> knock on the door. That's it. Them people never see them on social media. They don't know us from Adam. But when somebody went and knocked on their door, I want to challenge everybody here tonight to do that. I know we have people that live a long way, drive, drive a great distance, maybe an hour. We have people that drive 45 minutes. We have people that drive 30 minutes one way to church all the time. And maybe maybe you have to work Saturday and something. You said, i tell you what I can do, preacher. i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go out to my neighbor's house, and I'm going to take some of them little flyers. We're going to have them Wednesday night, the little kept mean flyers, and I'm just going to give them to them, and I'm just going to invite them to church. And I'm, That's so simple, and you'll be so blessed you won't believe it. You won't believe it. Bus captains, remember... Uh, you're getting help tonight. Remember, all you bus captains, I hope you got the text I sent you today. We're just, people are just waiting. Uh, Jimmy, stand up for just a second. Mr. Jimmy here, Dr. Jimmy Short. And uh, he's, uh, he ain't got his doctor's degree completed yet, but I think it'd be safe to say, go ahead and call him doctor. Uh, Brother Jimmy there sitting on the front row tonight was just an old sinner down there in the, in the Catawba uh, County, and he was thinking, somebody talked to him at work, and he was thinking about, you know what? I need to go to church. I need to go to church. That Saturday, Brother Mike Slaughter, one of our deacons, knocked on his door, and the rest is history. Here he is in church. All it took was that man knocking on that door. Sit down, Brother Jimmy. Think about how many other Jimmy are out there tonight. Just one. You know what? We need to get in church. You know what, honey? We need to go to church. You know what? We need to get these little devils in church. I wish there was, I wish there was a good church somewhere. Where we at, buddy? I'll tell you what. We got one. We got one. Now, here's the excuses that people give to keep from inviting people to church. I'm going to give them, run across these real quick. Number one, people say, I've heard this. People say, we provide a church and a preacher. We, we pay the bills here. We keep the lights on. Look at this beautiful floor, hardwood, oak, solid wood floor, beautiful uh, a commercial carpet, five inches of foam thick on those uh, padded seats, air-conditioned chandeliers, Woo! We provide all this. Them people, I'm sorry, good for other people, ought to know better, and they ought to come in here and get saved. Now, that sounds good, but that is not what God said. Never in the Bible did God say, build a church building and people would come to it. There are no church buildings in the New Testament. They met in houses, and out in the street, and wherever they could meet. That is not a good excuse. Number two, people say, I live right I try to live right every day, and my life will lead people to the Lord. That is not true either. I'm telling you, you ought to live right, but your life don't lead people to the Lord. Your life might make somebody hungry, but your lips lead somebody to the Lord. And by the way, your lips and your life ought to be saying the same thing. Your lips ought to say this, and your walk ought to say this. You walk ought to match your talk. Amen. And brother, you can't, you shouldn't say, I'm a Christian, come to church and then live so that they never want to go to church where you are. Amen. That's not an excuse. Number three, people say, I know people believe this. They say, well, we get in here and we pray and uh, the Holy Spirit will bring them in. I know a lot of preachers in this part of the country, they're infected with a doctrine that we call Calvinism. And they're so against what they call easy believism that they get up and they say, oh, bless God, it won't do you no good to get out there if God ain't in it. I don't know where they get something that dumb. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. What makes you think if you get out trying to get people to God that God ain't in it?
in it. That's his plan. That's his command. That's, his, that's the great commission, people. That's the order of God to the church. You, 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 say, you mean tell me you're doing what God told you to do and he ain't in it? That's hogwash. He is in it. He's in it. When you're out sincerely trying to get somebody to church and to God, he's in it. I'm telling you, he's in it. I'm telling you, they say, well, we'll just pray. And when the Holy Ghost moves us, we'll go witness. He must not ever move you. They say, well, we'll just pray and the Lord will draw them in. He must not never be drawing them in because them churches getting littler and littler and littler. I'm telling you tonight, nothing will take the place of people getting in the altar and getting full of God and going out saying, guess what? I want you to come to my church. I want you to come to my church Sunday. We're having a big day. We're having a fall festival. Bring you and your family. The kids get to ride four wheelers. We'll have a big time. Nothing will take the place of just people just doing what God said. Go in the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. Nothing will take the place of that. I'm preaching the Bible. Preaching you the Bible. And you know I am. You know I am. Amen. Will you go? Will you commit? Not many churches are doing this anymore. You know what they do nowadays? They say, we'll just get us a a band in here and we'll bring in a big set of drums and a guitar and everything. And I'm not saying those things are sinful. If they're played right, they can be played right. So I'm not saying the sin's in the instrument at all. Don't just some dumb people on the internet hear me say that and that's what they think I mean. I don't mean that at all. I'm just saying we're not going to have rock music. You ain't getting nobody to the Lord rock music. You might, uh, one man said, well, uh, I got saved in a Christian rock concert. That don't, that don't mean it's right. I mean, people get saved in prison. Is that a church? Well, you can find a diamond in a trash can. That don't make it a jewelry store. You can find a, you can find a dollar bill in a sewer, brother. That don't make it a bank. Amen? I'm telling you to, tonight, we need to have a church that God is in and pleased with and get the job done. What I'm saying tonight, Cut to the chase. We need all y'all to do something this week. All of you. All of you. And I'm not leaving nobody out. I'm talking to you, old people. I'm talking to you, little kids. I'm talking to you, seven and eight and nine and ten-year-old. I'm talking to you. You ain't too old. You ain't too young. If you are able to go to the bank and get your check cashed, you're able to go to your neighbor's house and tell them about Jesus. If you are able to walk out and hop on a school bus, you are able to tell your friends at school about the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Next excuse they give is this. Well, preacher, I I just think... uh, uh, it, 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 people ought to make their own decisions about stuff like that. and We shouldn't be out crying. That ain't what the Bible said. The Lord said, go in the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. You're not on scriptural grounds. I am. I'm on scriptural grounds. When I say God said, they went. They went. They went. They went. They went. I'll tell you one thing. I thank God my cousin, Jackie Bean, Linda Houck's sister, Jackie, uh, Jackie Patton, she was Jackie Beam, her maiden name. I thank God that my cousin Jackie had enough guts to witness to me and my cousin when I was lost. And I walked in there, and my cousin said, why don't you boys come to our revival? And it was like a dart went in me of conviction. And I started thinking about it. And then I heard about one of my friends getting saved. And it made me want to go. And I went and got saved. I went and got saved. Thank God my cousin had enough guts to speak up. Now, you know what? A lot of people thought, well, I'm not going to say that. That's old Danny Castle. He won't listen. He don't want to hear this. Here, You'd have chickened out, wouldn't you? But I'll tell you what, she had enough guts to speak up. She had more guts than a lot of preachers I know. We're going to put some Ethan's volunteered, and I'm looking for another teenager or two that's got the guts to stand at the flea market this Saturday and hand out uh, 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 camp meeting flyers. Is there another teenager in here that got enough guts to do it? Thank you, sister. There's one. There's one. All right, listen. Uh, I know you got enough guts while I'm up here preaching, but when it comes Saturday morning and you think, ugh, am I really going to do this? That's when you get up 
and you go. I mean, I'll get here tonight. And every one of y'all sit there saying, you know, he's right. I need to do that. And by Tuesday, you forgot every bit. The devil stole that which is sown in your heart like he's the bird still in the sea. And I'm telling you tonight, we've got an opportunity to have a big day next Sunday. Let's go, people. Let's go. Let's get these flyers and take them out of here. Uh, you ought to be fighting over these things. You ought to be up here after church saying, no, I want that big one. No, I want that big one. I'm going to take that and put that up at school. I'm going to take that and put, not that. Uh, put that up at school. It's not Halloween yet. That's a couple more weeks. I, I want to take that and put it up. I want to get my friends to come. Hallelujah. I want to be. Listen, if you put a witness out and somebody comes and does get saved, guess what? They'll be rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God and we'll shout when we get there. I'm going to be your friend now. I'm telling you, you ought to thank God you got a church and you got a preacher that pushes you to go soul winning. I know you don't like it. I know it makes some of you uncomfortable. You ought to thank God for it. I ain't much, but I got enough sense to know this book teaches that if you'll go, God will honor his word. He'll do it. Some people say this. It's just the last days, preacher. People just don't. I, I heard a preacher say that one day. He said, you know, people just don't get saved no more. You, you, if you're not careful, you'll develop this mentality. Oh, Lord, Obama ruined the world and, and the rock music and the transgenders and everything. It, we just give up. Just hold out to the end. Ain't nobody else getting saved. That ain't true. God's still saving people. People still can get saved. The grace is greater than all our sin. Uh, where sin did abound, what? Grace did much more abound. God's got enough grace to save any sinner, and I mean any sinner. You got some of these ignorant preachers on the, on the Internet trying to say this person can't get saved and that person can't get saved, setting themselves up in authority. Let me tell you something right here tonight. If a person can sincerely call on the Lord Jesus Christ and turn to him, there's enough grace in the bank of God to save their soul, write their name in the book of life, seal their destiny forever, predestinate them to the image of God's Son. He can do the same thing tonight as he did the night I got saved. He can do the same thing tonight as he did the night you got saved. He's still God. He's still able. And he's still willing. Don't you sit there and tell me God can't do it. That's ridiculous. Don't you sit there and say the devil's got so strong God can't overrule. He sure can. Somebody said this. Well, I'm active in the church in other ways. There are actually people who believe that since they sing specials once in a while, that that's their ministry and they're not obligated to witness. I, I know people like that. I preached hard on soul winning in churches before. Brian, I guarantee you he's seen groups down yonder in Gastonia and stuff. And then groups say, well, this is how we witness. Da, 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 da. You know, give us some money. Uh, that's their witness. Now, look, you get up and sing hallelujah, praise God. But you're still supposed to go out there and knock on somebody's door. I know people say, I teach Sunday school. I'm, I'm a good witness. Every week. I'm proud of you. I know people said, well, I buy the bus kids a Christmas present, and that's my witness. That ain't your witness. I could stand up here and say, I preach my fool head off every week so I don't have to go. That's just an excuse. That ain't right. That ain't right. My oblig every one of us are obligated to go. All are. Well, you got to go. If you live for God, you got to go. Little as much when God is in it. I want to say a thing or two and I'm through. You say, preacher, I'm not a, a Bible scholar. You don't have to be. There's nowhere in the Bible where it says you've got to be a Bible scholar to witness. Some of the best witnesses, witnessing people I've ever knew in my life knew very little doctrine or scripture. They just got on fire. They just got on fire. I knew a boy up in Marion. That boy got saved. He's a drug addict. And I'm telling you, he won. He'd come to church every Sunday with four or five old boys. Oh, and old hippie boys, Lord in mercy. I'm telling you, on Wednesday night, he'd bring three or four, and he'd have them in the altar praying for them and everything. He didn't know, he didn't know no doctrine. He hadn't been saved in a few months. But he had a burning zeal and desire 
to see people come to God. That's what you got to have. When you first get saved, you got a lot of zeal, no knowledge. Then after a while, if you ain't careful, you get all this knowledge and lose your zeal and lose your fire. So let's ask God. Again, we're going to have these kids at the flea market giving out flyers for the big day and the camp meeting. We're going to have double work on the bus routes all day long. And then when we get them here Sunday morning, have a Sunday school teacher be ready, something evangelistic, something powerful, right out of the book, and I'm going to preach, and we'll pray God will do a great work. Who will go? Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Come on, Miss Desi. You go. Wonder who will meet me here in the altar tonight. And say, Preacher, I'm going to just say, Lord, here am I. Send me. Well, so far, the ones that's come to the altar is the ones that go anyway. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. What about the rest of you? About the rest of you. Here am I. Can you, can you tell me what's wrong with saying that? What's wrong with saying, Lord, here am I. Send me. Send me. Can you pray that prayer and mean it tonight? You pray that prayer and mean it, God will use you. He'll use you. That's what you want, ain't it? Don't you want God to use you? Oh, yes. Hallelujah. We're going to pray tonight. Thank God. We're going to pray tonight. Let's ask the Lord to use us. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost of God, do a great and mighty work. Lord, we commit ourselves to you right now. And Lord, I'm telling you right now, hear my send me. Help me not to rebel. Help me not to shirk uh, back or hold back. Lord, I want you to send me this week to the gym, uh, to the street, to Walmart, to the bank, to the post office, wherever I go. And then when we go out visiting this week to the hospital or it's Saturday on the bus route, Lord, send me. Send me, Lord. Send me. I can't do nothing without you. Lord, purge my iniquity. Let my iniquity be purged and send me out for the glory of God. We'll thank you for it. Hallelujah. God, do something in every heart and every life. Bless our bus workers as we prepare for a big weekend next week. Fill them buses full. Use them for your glory. Touch every single worker. Touch every single driver. Touch every single bus. Touch them, God, we pray. Hallelujah. God, help every person here to get a handful of tracks and go knock on somebody's door this week and be a witness, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us to have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And we'll thank you and praise you for what you do. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Some still praying tonight. Some still.